Hello, I am Dr. Alexandre Amato, a vascular surgeon at the Amato Institute. And today I will talk about physical exercise and lipedema. Lipedema is a topic I really like and I talk about it a lot here on the channel. And exercise is one of the pillars of treating lipedema. So how can we do this? How are we going to combine exercise as a therapeutic tool? How can we improve the symptoms? How can we reduce the volume of lipedema using physical exercise? I wrote this book, The Exercise Method for Lipedema, exactly because of this. It all started, I began jotting down some ideas, thinking of making a small ebook. And in the end, it turned into a complete book here. I'll talk about the main aspects, what we need to remember because not just any exercise works for lipedema. And I constantly, I get messages here on uh, Instagram, on YouTube asking, yeah, oh, I do this exercise. Is this exercise good for lipedema? And the answer isn't that simple because some exercises need to be adapted, modified. It depends on the stage the patient is in with the disease. It also depends on the patient's goal. Are they looking to gain muscle, to grow, to do aerobics so all of this varies a lot depending on the stage of the disease and each person's goal individually the pain from lipedema itself that pain in the lower limbs which can just be increased sensitivity to touch it happens due to inflammation and also because of hypoxia and see exercise can both increase and decrease inflammation and it can also cause hypoxia so what can we do to increase or decrease each of these factors? Just out of curiosity, note that there are studies showing that patients with lipedema have up to 30% less strength in their thigh muscles. This is significant. We can't apply the same strategy we would for someone without lipedema to someone with lipedema in an inflammatory, super painful phase. Many times I get patients here who are suffering, doing a lot of exercise, doing the wrong exercise and not seeing results. So the first aspect that is very important, which I talk about a lot, is inflammation. So uh, inflammation is uh, the main issue with lipedema. It's what brings the worst symptoms. And physical exercise by itself can, at a certain intensity level, reduce this inflammation, meaning it has an anti-inflammatory effect. But if it's too intense, it can even increase this inflammation. Any exercise for muscle gain, for example, ends up causing micro lesions in the muscles. As these small lesions gradually heal, uh, they contribute to enhancing muscle strength. However, these micro lesions can also trigger inflammation. Therefore, it's crucial to adjust the exercise intensity correctly to promote an anti-inflammatory response, particularly during periods of heightened inflammation and severe symptoms. If one attempts to increase muscle mass during such phases, it may exacerbate inflammation, hindering the desired outcomes. It becomes challenging to lose fat and build muscle effectively amidst inflammation. So we first need to uh, correct the metabolism to then achieve better results with physical exercise. Once the disease is more controlled and there's no longer all that inflammation, then it is possible and easy to gain muscle mass. That's why the exercise can't be the same for the same person, but in different stages of the disease. Another thing is the stage of lipedema. So if we have a patient in the initial stage, stage one, or in the final stage of lipolymphedema, which has associated lymphedema, uh, it's obvious that uh, the daily difficulties uh, will be different and Obviously, bodies, the exercises will also be different. Someone in the initial stage, stage one, for example, won't have trouble getting in and out of the car or difficulty climbing stairs. Now, someone in the advanced stage four might already have these difficulties. And then physical exercise can try to help improve exactly these aspects. While in the early stages, the goal might be entirely different. It could be more aesthetic, muscle gain, well-being or a healthy lifestyle. So we need to evaluate each patient and understand what each one needs at each moment in life. There's no point in taking someone in the final stage of the disease and saying, 
initially you need to gain muscle mass no there's a lot to improve first you need to improve lymphatic return improve the pump for lymphatic and venous return you need to reduce inflammation there's a lot to do before focusing on aesthetics and obviously this requires constant adaptation so you won't start with an exercise that today works well for lipedema maybe it won't work well forever both because you might improve your disease aspects and might want a bit more and then you'll have to adapt those exercises but you need to know exactly which variables you're going to tweak so the main ones will be intensity the type of exercise and with that you'll steer towards the result you want there are many diseases that come along with lipedema these are called comorbidities exactly because lipedema causes fat deposition in the legs and thighs there is a change in gait and with this change in gait some orthopedic injuries occur injuries that end up hindering the execution of certain exercises so a very common injury is valgus knee the x-shaped knee in extreme cases it even makes walking difficult so we have to consider this and strengthening the thigh muscles can even improve so physical exercise can not only improve the symptoms of lipedema but if well directed it can help to correct the other changes that come along with lipedema flat feet so flat feet which is the way you step it will alter the venous pump so venous return is impaired the collapse of the plantar arch and all this also hinders some movements so there are exercises that can improve this hypermobility it also has a higher frequency in lipedema so these are people who can have greater joint mobility so i have no joint mobility but these are people who can place the palm of their hand on the floor who can even put their leg behind the head or at least manage to at some point in life this hypermobility gives a greater range of motion in the joints and this can seem interesting but actually it ends up straining these joints tendons muscles it can cause other injuries so physical exercise needs to be directed to strengthen the core muscles the muscles to maintain the body structure another frequently encountered injury is chondromalacia which refers to knee cartilage damage when you place your hand on your knee and move your leg if you sense a crepitus a cracking sound it feels crunchy there's a patient who describes it as crunchy this condition is often linked to alterations in gait resulting from lipedema. Such changes can restrict certain physical activities and some exercises may exacerbate the chondromalacia. So you need to know exactly what you can do to avoid causing more problems. I mentioned venous return and lymphatic return. They are facilitated by muscle contraction. So precisely with physical exercise and muscle contraction, we pump both venous blood and lymph back to the central circulation so if we don't have proper contraction and this contraction might not be adequate due to improper gait but also due to reduced muscle capacity so it's very common exactly because of this decrease uh, in muscle strength in muscle efficiency in patients with lipedema that we see a negative impact on both venous and lymphatic return so some exercises are better for improving this return and we need to take advantage of the greater efficiency of exercises for example in water so when you're in a pool the pressure exerted by the water also helps facilitate the return of blood and lymph but there are other exercises too that for example increase the range of motion of the foot and this will contract the calf more which is the main peripheral heart pump but we also have the plantar pump 
When we step, we squeeze the blood in the sole of the foot and this blood ends up returning to circulation, acting as a propulsive pump. Now another aspect is the influence of the mind on exercise. Everyone talks about the influence of exercise on the mind, but the reverse, which is the mind on exercise, I see less often discussed. So what does the influence of exercise on the mind mean? For example, exercising reduces anxiety. That's an almost common sense piece of information. Everyone knows that exercising makes you calmer, that it improves various aspects of life in general. Now, how much does the mind influence the choice of exercise? Did you know that if you have high anxiety or, or if you have some impediment, for example, you are afraid to go to the gym to show your in body, that's your mind making it difficult for you to perform the exercise. You'll need to find alternatives for that. So I don't want to show my body, so that's why I don't go to a... If you don't go to the pool, you won't do the best exercise in water for lipedema. You know? And in the end, if we trace it back, it all started with a problem in the mind, a fear of showing the body. By an anti-obesity bias or some negative impact from the past. So the environment you create for exercising is very important. But also the pursuit of dopamine. Our life is an incessant search for dopamine. That small daily dose of our addiction. And this addiction can be in food, it can be in even more harmful vices like drugs, smoking, shopping. There are many things that can cause a small release of dopamine in our brain. But if we know that exercise gives us dopamine, we need to know how to extract that dopamine to the fullest from exercise. Often, we compete with someone else or compete with ourselves. Always trying to improve, we end up getting daily microdoses of dopamine and the medications, right? Those who started a treatment for lipedema are often taking several medications. Will this influence exercise? Won't it? Is there any that might make it harder? So for example, there are some medications that can lower blood sugar. Does that prevent doing any physical exercise? So we need to evaluate each patient's situation and understand how this might affect their physical exercise. And remember that most patients undergoing proper, correct treatment for lipedema are on some type of diet or dietary habit change. There are many, but it can range from intermittent fasting, a ketogenic diet, an anti-inflammatory diet. I often talk about the anti-inflammatory diet and the ketogenic diet, which are excellent for lipedema. So what is the impact of this on physical exercise? I've heard people say that those on a ketogenic diet can't do physical exercise, even though there is a lot of uh, scientific research already published on a professional athletes on a ketogenic diet doing physical exercise. So it's not a limitation. It starts just like on a ketogenic diet. There's more dehydration. You need to drink more fluids. You need to be very mindful of hydration. We have to understand the individual aspects of each diet and apply that to physical activity. So my main message in this video is to remember bio-individuality. An exercise that works for one person won't necessarily work for another. It's important to assess, understand the goal of each person, what each one wants to achieve mm. with this exercise. Most exercises can be adapted. So I really like doing this exercise here. But they told me that this exercise isn't allowed for lipedema. Actually, that's not true. You just need to understand your body and adapt the exercise to your body's needs. Maybe you can't do it exactly as you're doing it right now. Maybe it needs a small adjustment or a bigger one. There are really very few exercises that absolutely cannot be done with lipedema. Now, there are exercises that are more likely to work and if I mention them here, the chance of being wrong is small. And when I'm making a video for a larger audience, I have to be very careful to say, do this, it will work. Because even if it works for half, 
the audience and doesn't work for the other half, I'm harming the half it didn't work for. So what are the exercises that are more likely to work for a larger audience? The exercises in water like swimming, water aerobics, aqua cycling and aqua jogging have a huge chance of being right. So I feel very comfortable saying go this route because the chances are high. But it doesn't mean that only this can be done. It means that the chance of going wrong with these is lower. A walk, for example, is hard. It's hard to go wrong with a walk in terms of intensity. Maybe it won't achieve the bigger goals of gaining muscle mass, but the chance of making a mistake and ending up in flame during a walk is very small. Now, you have to remember that exercises change according to the phase of treatment with the stage. And even within the stage, with the phase, right? Whether you're inflamed or not. In the beginning, you need a medical evaluation to understand this. We weren't born with a manual for our body, right? There's a phase of understanding, of self-awareness for you to know when you're inflamed when you're not, when you can do a certain exercise and when you can't. So did you enjoy watching our video? Make sure to subscribe, click the bell icon and stay tuned for the next exciting video that's on its way.